How aerodynamic was the revolutionary Koenigsegg CCX? Let's find out. In the first half of this video, we are testing the regular Seg CCX, but in the second half, we are testing it without the rear wing, because according to Koenigsegg, this car should generate about 100 kilos of downforce at 250 kph. How much of that is because of the rear wing though? The results are surprising. But first, the classic Seg. The Seg was epic for a few reasons, one of them being just how sleek it was for a supercar. The velocity is 20 meters per second, and we see here from the very nose, the flow separates so well and stays attached over the hood. The front window is a little too slanted, but not enough to make the flow separate where it meets the hood though. The roof though, that's the work of art, because okay, at the front, the flow has to accelerate quite a bit, which isn't ideal, but look at the rear. Look at how well the flow just moses on down. It's almost as perfect as a wing's top surface, which you don't see in cars. That also provides the rear wing with awesome flow to work with and produce downforce. Perhaps the only weakness here is just where the roof meets the back. There is a little flow separation, but that isn't enough to spoil the roof's sweetness. The front little splitter works great too, with almost no separation just after it, which is hard to do given how much the streamlines bend ahead of it. So in reality, this splitter, which is sharp, is handling non-zero degree angles of attack like a boss. Perhaps that is why they opted to go for a small one, or maybe they didn't care about producing more downforce with a big one. The flow under the car is incredibly well behaved to the point of being boring, but that's what the underbody is supposed to do. The rear diffuser is working pretty well too, however it isn't very aggressive compared to other supercars. That makes sense considering that only 100 kilos of downforce is created. With a more aggressive diffuser, you would get a lot more than that. But while the downforce suffers, the wake is exceptionally small, which is what you want when it comes to drag. From the pressure, I am really impressed because yes there is high pressure at the front, but look at how small the frontal area is. That means there isn't much surface area for the high pressure to act over, and that reduces the drag. That is clever engineering. The front of the roof, unfortunately, has quite low pressure which reduces downforce, and I suspect that it was left like that for aesthetic purposes. The rest of the roof is also a little low in pressure, but it's not that bad. The rear wing is doing very well, producing high pressure on top in an oasis of low pressure. That gives us a clue about how much the rear wing is contributing to the downforce, but we will see later on how much exactly. While the front splitter is good here, the underbody is generally okay, not great. The pressure could be lower. From the top, we can see that the side mirrors were designed to reduce drag because their weights are directed into the body as opposed to away from the car. However, that makes the car dirtier because dirt hitting the mirrors then gets directed into the car. I'm pretty impressed with the rear wing so far because you can see the flow goes under it and isn't disturbed too much. That tells me that the flow over the wing is mostly attached or completely attached and that means it's working properly. Looking at the vortices created, you can now really tell just how good the seg is. There are no A pillar or C pillar vortices and that is because how rounded the front is and how sleek the back is. The front wheel arches could use a little work because they are letting air bleed out the top and create vortices. I would say the rear isn't great either. The sides are creating a lot of vortices and that is because they are too square. They need to be rounded more. On top of that, we get familiar huge vortices at the back and they kick up a little. The mirrors aren't producing many vortices and that is because of their clever design. Now these streamlines show just how sleek the seg is. Interestingly, the flow doesn't really meander around too much. Each one pretty much follows its line from the nose of the car to its tail. That is unlike many other supercars which funnel the air elsewhere. But this level of simplicity from the seg helps make it easier to cut down on the drag. One thing they could have done is kick the flow up over the rear wheel houses because you can see the flow gets directed a little down which increases lift. I'm still really impressed with just how well the flow is directed into the rear wing though. Looking at the drag isosurfaces, there are only 7 regions producing drag. The 4 wheels, which feature quite a lot from the jetting vortices, particularly from the front wheels, that's not great. Then the side mirrors, which are quite good still. Then the rear, which is really a victim of its own good looks. Well call me Ishmael, we have a new leader with a drag coefficient of just 0.30. The sleek, relatively minimalist design is what helps bring it down so low, and the fact that the downforce is so low too. But on that topic, how much does the rear wing affect the seg's aerodynamics and downforce? Let's find out now. Most of the car is very similar. The front still features the high pressure, the front splitter is doing awesome, and the front of the roof is still accelerating the flow. But as we get to the rear, there are quite a few interesting changes. First, Expectedly, the flow doesn't kick up as much in the wake, which is because there is no rear wing there to do that. That is a dead giveaway that less downforce is being produced. But there's more to it than that. Look just ahead of the wing. With the wing, there is more recirculation and slow flow there. You don't get that where there is no wing though. 
That is surprising because often wings don't have much of an upstream effect, but here, the rear wing is obviously making it harder for the flow to come through and causing this backlog of air. From the pressures, I've tilted the plane down so we can get a better gander in and around the wing. I don't think there is much of an upstream effect here though. I don't know, what do you think? Perhaps the slower flow we saw was superficial when it comes to the pressure. With the rear wing, there isn't much more low pressure in the wake, so that indicates that the rear wing isn't producing much more drag. The flow is well attached, so it's all good. And maybe that is why a small wing was chosen. Looking from this plane slicing through, there isn't much of a difference between the wing and no wing here. Something that is interesting is that look at how as the air leaves the middle region, it suddenly fans out to behind the rear wheels. That probably makes the wake a little larger because the flow that is coming around the sides of the car can't get sucked in as much because there is already flow there hogging the good areas. Looking at the vortices, one thing I didn't notice in the other one is that the front little splitter is creating vortices around the front of the car. That is an unfortunate penalty that often comes with splitters. I mean, you have high pressure near low pressure and nothing really stopping them from joining. Some of the vortices are cut down in the wake of the rear wing. These vortices aren't created directly by the wing though, but probably three-dimensional vortices are created here because of the pressure imbalances from the rear wing, which is causing this roll up. These streamlines are pretty funny because you can see that the flow is still being directed into the rear wing region, but there's nothing there. So these streamlines just keep going down. So in reality, actually, without the rear wing, this car is less efficient because it was designed to use a rear wing. And we can clearly see the flow is being directed there, but without the rear wing, all this design and energy is wasted. The drag coefficient isn't affected much. The drag producing regions are the same. In fact, the drag coefficient without the rear wing came out to be 0.0304, which isn't much, and the difference is well within the uncertainty of this simulation. And it makes sense because while the rear wing is producing downforce, it's only producing about 32 counts, which at 250 kph is only about 70-75 kilos. Peace out amigos.